Welcome back. One of the most important and least acknowledged parts of our economy are those that fall under the care economy banner. Here's what you need to know. One in two Canadians participate in the care economy, either paid or unpaid, according to StatsCan, and a good part of that work, including child and health care, allows others to work. The majority of care work is done by women, often migrant and racialized, and their jobs are more likely to be part-time and precarious. The value of that work was estimated between 516 and 860 billion in 2019, excluding children. Care for people with long-term illness or disability was valued at 97 billion in 2018. Paid care work and health and education are a huge component of this sector, 12% of GDP and representing 21% of jobs. There are big labor shortages in the care economy. Post-pandemic, the vacancy rate in healthcare and social assistance jumped 39%. By the first quarter of 2021, 99,000 jobs were needed to be filled, with vacancy rates in nursing and care facilities up 49% and hospital job vacancy rates up 53%. Partly that's because these jobs, already hard and then dangerous too, are not well paid, something international economic bodies have been warning will need to change if the care economy is to be sustainable. Instead, Canada underspends on social services, 2% less as a share of GDP than our peers. That amounts to a difference of $46 billion a year. So what is the best way to support and grow Canada's care economy? Seamus O'Regan is Minister of Labour and Seniors. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me, Amanda. So we know it's big and we know it's important, Minister, but how do we grow it? How do we make it a focus? First of all, you've got to focus on workers. Focus on the workers. Um, it became very clear to a lot of people in the early stages of COVID uh, that we were relying on workers who were overworked and underpaid, personal mm -hmm. support workers, uh, and who, were, who had multiple jobs and traveling from facility to facility at a time when we were worried about viruses going from place to place. This is something that was a bit of an eye opener for a lot of people. But what every part of the care economy that you just described has in common are these workers, and sometimes the same workers working in different fields. So we need to grow the care economy in order to grow the rest of the economy. Uh, if the care, the care economy is the one economy that is the foundation for all the rest, because if we can't go to work because we're sick or we're caring for somebody, right. then that's holding things back. So it's important we look after the workers. And one part of that, of course, is uh, paying more for the, the jobs that we already yeah. have and paying something. A lot of this care economy work is actually volunteer. It's unpaid. Uh, does that shift a little bit the economics of the whole kind of sector and what that means? Obviously, that could grow the economy if you pay people more, but it also costs more. Yeah. So, I mean, if you look at the unpaid economy sector, I mean, we think we're losing something like $1.3 billion for people who could be doing something else. Um, uh, there are varying levels of it. I mean, I'm, I'm the primary caregiver of my mother, uh, who's uh, just turned 80 and, and is in fine shape. Um, but that's, you know, that is something that I constantly have to think about, especially given my schedule and how much I'm traveling in Ottawa and et cetera. I'm lucky. Generally, if you're, you're looking at, you know, the people who are in, in unpaid care work are women, uh, overwhelmingly racialized um, and otherwise could be working it could very much be a part of this economy mm -hmm. um, so you know it, you got to have a, it affects all of us but yep. to varying degrees and the vast majority are uh, way underpaid if paid at all and way overworked important to think of this as a sector that we can invest in uh, the government can invest in it obviously I know that's a, a focus for your government what's your message to Bay Street and other investors about how to think about the care economy it's working for child care We've got a record number of women now in the workforce. Uh, and that happened after we started bringing in childcare across the country in provinces and territories. I mean, it's not, we knew that from Quebec and we knew that from the Quebec experience. I think maybe we were just taken aback by how quickly it would take. Um, there were a lot of women who did want to go back to the workforce, uh, but did, could not find affordable childcare, and now they can. And we've got to ramp that up. We still have a long ways to go. But that does have an effect on the economy because it means we are hiring the best people for the jobs. Um, you know, that's what I, I'm, I'm big on diversity in, in the workforce because only when you knock down those barriers are you getting the best people. Right. Right? How, how do we attract more investment to the sector? Um, that's an excellent question, and it's one of the questions that we've got two things going on right now. We, we've, for the first time, we've got a, a care economy strategy that we're going to be working on. That's kind of long term. In the short term, we're looking at a sectoral table uh, for the care economy to figure out how they also all work together mm -hmm. uh, when we're making these investments and making these investments particularly in workers. Again, like they're all interrelated, whether it's care for, the, for the, you know, those with disabilities, whether right. it's seniors care, child care. This is 
a big 13% sector in our economy that allows everybody else to grow and prosper. And deserves our attention. Minister, thanks for being with us. Thank you. Seamus O'Regan is Minister of Labor and Seniors.